Right guys, I'm going to tell you about um, Hatsumi and Shoto Tanamura in a minute, but let's go with a joke. Why do burgers go to the gym? To get better buns. And because I've not done jokes in a while, how about this? Why do fish live in salt water? Because pepper would make them sneeze. <laughs> love crap jokes. I absolutely love them. Right, who would you prefer to train with? Shoto Tanamura or Masaki Hatsumi? Now... This is the third in a mini-series of videos done. One was why I got out, kicked out of the Bunjikan. One was why I left the Genbukan. And then this one is who would you prefer to train with and who's the best instructor, who's the best fighter out of the two of them. I also also talked about another ninja scroll we got and possibly a rival to Takamatsu doing Ninpo Taijutsu or ninja martial arts around the same time, the 1950s. Uh, right, so the question is, and you put your answers below. Who do you think would win in a fight between, in their prime, with Shoto Tanamura and Masaki Hatsumi? This, so that's question number one. Question number two is, who is the better instructor? Shoto Tanamura of Igenbukan or Masaki Hatsumi? Now, recently I got a ninja scroll. I've shown it in a couple of videos. So if you're watching this, you're probably well aware. And it was... Um, a modern interpretation, so it's not really real. But uh, a few people, James Ragnor, uh, Ben Weasel, and Pablo Martinez have all sent me money. And I've, and there's a one more come off um, Super Chat, Super Like Chats on YouTube, but the money's not come through yet. So uh, I'll get that sorted. All you guys are going in the next book I do, which is not written yet, and you'll all go in the thank you at the beginning, along with anybody who donates. So if you do want to donate to me, guys, click the link at the top. And uh, I'm, I'm now, with all these guys together, I've got 50% of the money back from the scroll. So thank you so much, guys. That is superb. So um, you will be in the next book that I put out in a year or so. Okay, right. So my opinion on training with both Shoto Tanamura and Masaki Atsumi. I'm going to be honest with you, Masaki Atsumi's dojo was filthy, disgusting, zero discipline, zero etiquette, zero um, positive energy, all money, all messy, all just not a place you want to be. So, Shoto Tanamura's dojo, over-disciplined, almost into comic-style discipline, clean, very clean had less of a feeling of somewhere of a sacred place. Hatsumi's had, so one of the problems with Hatsumi, one, well, two problems with Hatsumi. One of them is a main problem, and I think they've changed their dojo since I started saying this. And one is he puts pictures of himself on the Kamidana, and you're like, oh no. So the Kamidana is the god shelf, and you can put ancestors up there, you can put, you know, because it's the same as the Butsudan, it also goes in this area of the dojo where the ancestors go and the gods go. And Hatsumi has, has had pictures of himself as a god, which is just outrageous. Um, outrageous. The second one is I was told off by a monk for performing Kujikiri towards the altar. I didn't even get there. I went, and he went, no, he says, never perform it to the altar yet. Yeah. Because you're banishing. Kujikiri is a banishing ritual. And Masaki Atsumi always does his Kujikiri towards the altar. I don't know if Shoto Tanamura does. I can't remember, to be honest. I think he does as well. Which is a very big faux pas in um, Buddhism, Japanese Buddhism. If anybody can find any more information on any reason why they would be doing it that way, let me know. So, however, Hatsumi, beyond Hatsumi having the pictures of himself on the Kamidana, it did genuinely feel like it had lineage, ancestry and some sort of, you know, some sort of depth to it, whereas Shoto Tanamura's was too plastic, too plain. Too, while it was neat and that was good, it was it's very similar, I think, to Katori Shinto Ryu. They just have a very pine wood dojo without anything. I've been in some awesome dojos. So you've got two types of dojo, okay, guys? Forget your sports gym, you get two types of dojo. You get the dojo, which is polished, clean, there's nothing in it. Everybody's in a cupboard, people bring stuff out and your train goes away, it's just a hall with an altar at the front. 
I don't really like that type of dojo. Then, but that's personal opinion. Then the other one is they've got lots of pictures on the wall. They've got the kanji written down. They've got me not memorabilia, but stuff from the school. They've got warrior weapons. Now you can do that either really messy or really cool. And I've been to some dojos where it was done really quite good, actually. It was done really quite good. But so Masaki Atsumi and Shoto Tanamura, their dojos are not really great to be in. They're not very good. Um, okay, teaching, uh, sorry, training. Shoto Tanamura is very much, you start here, you will finish here. This is where you're going to be. You know, I watched these black belts do it and they, they trained very much the same as the white belts. They've just been doing it longer so we're better, which is a very good way of training martial arts, but it has no real scope for going beyond that. So... Shoto Tanamura points for discipline, organization, systematic training, etc. But no points for pushing it beyond the basic steps, you know, just basic martial arts. You do it, you, you start on day one and the last day you're doing pretty much the same thing beyond going up to the next kata, but you're not really pushing beyond that. I know a guy did comment and said they did have classes beyond which I'd gone to and... Um, you know, it was a long time ago, and uh, so he does, he says, I rem he remembers me, and as I said, I didn't go loads, I was just not impressed with it, it wasn't the best martial arts instructor, it wasn't the best martial arts being taught, and the instructor was a bit weird, um, so, but you get what you go for, you know what I mean, I don't know if you do uh, Ron Seal adverts out there in America, but it does what it says on the tin, and you know, that's it. However, unfortunately, he was doing things that I thought were inappropriate for wheel fighting, such as cartwheels and shuriken throwing from my pants and all that. It was just a bit like fantasy ninja. Um, then, uh, obviously, Masaki Atsumi is totally the opposite. They, you can't have two more polar opposite people. He is now make up whatever you want. Do whatever you want. It doesn't matter if it works. Doesn't matter if it doesn't work. Doesn't matter if it's the most atrocious idea in the world. Doesn't matter if it's an amazing idea. You can stand in that dojo and get. So in Shoto Tanamura's, you get ten people. Some are good. Some are bad. Some are okay. They all vaguely get to a similar sort of level with a smaller range. Hatsumi, you can have ten people and from crap to amazing, and they're all stay at the opposite range. Amazing people stay amazing. Crap people stay crap, and they do some weird stuff in the middle. So. I would say Shoto Tanamura is points down for really not pushing his martial arts anywhere beyond just what he thinks he should do. And Hatsumi for just letting people do whatever they want, anytime they want, without actually doing anything of any value. And the difference here is that you can get value out of both. So Shoto Tanamura has some very strong kata. You'd be like, bang, you'd be like, oh, bloody hell. You know, it'd be like, lock, crick, and you're on. But like... You have to follow a very formulaic pattern. Hatsumi, you can put them locked on, you can get it and everything. But there's just no, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's just, let's just say neither of them have gone in the right direction. They just pull the opposites of each other. Okay, next. Who would win in a fight? Let's look at in them in their heyday. What do you think? Right, in their heyday... I would say Hatsumi has a far more realistic understanding of how combat works. Uh, bear with me. Because he was like, just before he went crazy, he was very much, that's good, you know, let's do that. But, you know, let's move that beyond. And if you watch him in these early stages, in his 50s, 40s, 50s, 60s, he's pretty good. He's like, and whoa, and we've got, and you beat, and locks on, you know, very much like, a lot of people diss Aikido, and, and they do, and I think, oh, I think Aikido gets a bad rap, because people see it the wrong way, they, I am not a massive Aikido fan, but what I do think about Aikido is, they teach you to move fast, they teach you to move in the moment, and grip, and you're away, and all you need in Aikido, and people, it does my head, and people think you've got to do this throw, and they all fall over the place, all you need in Aikido is that, and, and you know, that reaction, and when they move back to do something, that's all you need. In a real fight, you're going to batter them and you're going to just, twack them, right, as hard as you can. But it's that reaction, bang, lock, done. No messing about, no throwing about. So Daito Ryu and um, Aiki Jutsu get closer to that. And Hatsumi was vaguely going down that way with a bit more before he went off on a just crazy tangent. Whereas Shoto Tanamura... It's a strong physical character. He, I think, works for the police. He probably has been in quite a lot of fights. So, who would win in a fight? 
my gut feeling tells me it would be Shoto Tanamura. Not because of his ability, but because he's probably a naturally harder fighter than Hatsumi, I think. Whereas Hatsumi is a more gifted man in understanding martial arts. Shoto Tanamura probably has a more sturdy push, you know, a sturdy outlook on the martial arts. Right, so who would I go to train with again if I had to train? I would never go back to Shoto Tanamura. I thought the man was a complete fool. And um, and I know that will annoy a few people, but I just didn't like him. And he he said to me, and, and, and you know, he just clearly, after he saw me train for a bit, and, you know, I can, you know, I can train decent amount, decent in martial arts. I can know my way around it. He said, oh, you are my student. If you see anyone, tell everyone you are my student. Just because I've been training and, you know, it was like, okay. And he said all this. And it was like, okay, mate, you know. I, and, and to be honest, that was nice. I thought it was nice, you know, and it was good. But he wasn't doing it out of polite. He was doing it to grab on. He's like, if you've been trained, don't say Hatsumi. You're saying me. Okay, you know. And then, and he just threatened to cut my head off. For, for, I don't mind if I checked his wife or something. Or, you know what I mean? I burnt the dojo down. Or I was like pissing over the altar. But I'd like landed in the wrong place unbeknown. And it was like, I didn't even know this was a rule in the dojo. And it was like, okay, mate, no, you know. No, you're not going to cut me head off and I'll nut you. So shut up. Um, so I would probably never go and train with him again. But if I was to train with Hatsumi, I would need one-on-one -on -one and I'd need to pay for private lessons and I'd say, can we ditch the bullshit and just teach me? Ditch all the crap and let's teach me, you know, the finer points without the, oh, yeah, 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 you're great. Just don't, don't butter my bum hole. Just teach me proper. Tell me when I'm wrong. Or... I would train my with one of Hatsumi's better students, Dennis Bartram, basically, uh, if I was to go anywhere down that route again. So there you go, guys. Shoto Tanamura versus Masaki Hatsumi. But they're just my opinions of spending... Remember, I lived in Japan for a long time, and I spent more time with Hatsumi, but I spent enough time with Shoto Tanamura. It wasn't just a weekend seminar. I went multiple times, and I saw him all the times. And I trained with other martial artists in Japan, and... You know, um, the simple fact is, is the myth of the Japanese master has gone, hasn't it? It's gone. We used to be like, oh, train with the Japan. You've trained with the Japanese master. Well, yeah, but you can train with equally good fighters here easily. You can train with great fighters in America. There's no real reason why you need to train with a Japanese person. What the Japanese person does is give you the amazing feeling of being in Japan. The dojo, an understanding of the language. So, for example, um, we all say, like, you know, to re to block things. But half the time, these blocks are called receiving motions. So, so you, see, you don't you don't block something. You sort of receive it. And, if, you know, you, you receive You're not blocking it. You're receiving it and getting on. And that, that depth gives it more. But none of the Japanese people that I've met have ever really been able to transmit that over to the English people and, and take them. You just They just don't quite know how to teach. Um, I did once go around, bizarrely, I went in, do you know a band called One Giant Leap? I went around with the guy, I forget his name, tall, English, white, not the black gentleman, the white gentleman. And he was... Um, because that's for, from Faithless, the band Faithless. Uh, I think he's, he's he died now. He's got cancer, I think, the, the black gentleman. But the white man, he met me on Tokyo Bridge. I just bumped into him. He's like, have you heard Faithless? I'm like, no, mate. I'm in heavy metal. And he's like, insomnia. You know, I can't get no sleep. Bah, 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 bah. I was, oh, yeah, I know your tune, mate. So we went on a... He was just like, come on a day trip with me. So he took me on a day trip filming uh, when he did the second DVD of the One Giant Leap album. And uh, we went to a martial artist's house and it was just in the middle of nowhere, very small, and he was good. But he, I asked to be a student, but he wouldn't accept me, probably because I'm English, all Japanese, in a house, doing it, and I was like, you're mustard, mate, you're really good. No. The other guy I saw was in, I don't know if anybody knows him, but basically, in when Hatsumi does his Ayase dojo stuff on the Tuesday night, was it? Um, basically, there was a camp show... Sh uh, Kempo school ne on the mats next to him and there was a massive guy who was like one of the top students and he was just mustard and I thought I won't fight you mate <laughs> so you know but there you go right sorry rambling on
comments down below. And of course, sorry guys, if you want to help me out, if you really want to help this channel, you can uh, help donate to the channel or get yourself a copy of The Art of War, Real Warfare.